Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Spar and Brawl. I hope you're having a decent day. As always, I'm joined by my co-host, Sam, and we're just making a few mini videos today, small ones. So here's one of the first ones, and we're going to talk about this, this tweet of Jenk. So let's read the tweet, and we'll get right into it, and then some of his other comments back and forth with Joe Rogan and um, Vanguard's commentary as well on this issue. So Jenk had tweeted, and this disgusting man had tweeted, in response to, well, first Jenna Jameson, I tweeted, I can say from personal experience that Joe Rogan is fantastic in bed at Jenk Uger. To which Jenk Uger responded, to be fair, you have had a lot of experience there. So now the reason that, you know, Jenna Jameson has tweeted this is because Jenk, I've only seen the clip. I don't know the context. Maybe Sam knows the context, but he came out and said, you know, if there are any woman, any if the trans woman out there who slept with Joe Rogan, you know, come out and let us know. Because I guess he's trying to say that Joe is so obsessed with trans women, he must have slept with some of them. I'm perhaps, you know, a bit speculating, but I'm guessing this is where he came from. But Sam, I. Uh, yeah. By the way, uh, I didn't know this part. That are you? Uh, is Jenna Jim Jameson tweeting that due to that video of Jenk? You think? True. Is that hearsay? Is that speculation on my behalf? It only makes sense. <laughs> I'm using reason and logic to put two and two together. It makes sense. But you're right. I don't uh, know. I don't know analogy. for a fact. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Should we strike no, no, that it, out? <laughs> does it at? <laughs> Objection here, <laughs> and move to strike this last comment. <laughs> but <laughs> we've been influenced too much by Johnny Depp, Amber Heard, Try Life. Yeah. But no, I was just wondering, does it have an at Jenk uh, Yuga reply on the Jenna James? Yeah, 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 it does. Oh, all right. So it probably is, I would imagine. Yeah. I, so yeah, that was <laughs> your deductive skills again. <laughs> again. <clears throat> 20 out of 20, top notch. Which again, you know, someone can be like, hey, Jenk, there's nothing wrong with this tweet of Jenk. Why are you picking on him? Well, yeah. Well, and like that out of context, true. But the fact is that this is a man who goes on like anytime, like any comment, bad thing is said towards a woman, you know, he goes on his on his show and like, you know, he has this like look on his face, like he's so sad, like he can't take it or anymore. Like, oh my God, and all this. And then this is the kind of stuff that he says. And then he has another tweet that we're going to get into that's even worse. So, I mean, the hypocrisy and the level of disgustingness on this man seriously always surprises me. Sometimes I think we're not going to make any more videos on Jenk. But then with gems like this, where, you know, where his hypocrisy is like full out on display, you can't really help yourself. And the next tweet, I mean, that one, it really, you know, someone who makes th those kind of comments, sure, make them if you want, but then don't go around like acting as if, you're this very respectful person. And let's forget about your track record because I, mean, I don't think there are too many people who have such a bad track record. I mean, there aren't too many people who've written essays and made videos saying such horrible stuff about women. Maybe his right-wing buddies that he hates so much. Yes. The, I mean, yeah. I mean, on the hypocrisy thing, I completely agree with you. I would add that it's not just... Like, he's somebody who goes after people for their past comments, it mm. seems, sometimes. But it's not that him, forget about his past comments, <laughs> this is, like, new shit. Like, this is 2022 <laughs> original, like, uh, you know, it's, like, the latest model of the car, and it's uh, still, like, killing people. Yeah. And uh, so I, I would say that it's a bit worse than that. And, again, I do think, I mean, maybe, like, I... If it was funny, at least if. I can see a point. Like Dr. Stanhope, who's, by the way, been on Joe Rogan and is on my mind because of Johnny Depp drama, probably, or is one of the rudest comedians I think I've ever seen. But he's funny. He, he Or, you know, Don Rickles, who made, like, personal jokes about the mm -hmm. people, who, you know, that was his thing, roasting. Like, it's funny. Like, this is funny in a... And funny in a Don Rickles was funny even when he was in a position of power mocking someone. Mm -hmm. It was just I don't know why, but it would come out good hearted, good natured somehow. Don Rickles is probably like the, was the best at roasting. And then, and then you have this, which is like a joke that you're 
like you know you the friend of your uncle that you yeah. try to avoid at a party because he's just the sexist uh, uh, i bet you got a lot of yeah, yeah. but at least he doesn't clothing. go around lecturing bet- you <laughs> Yes, yes, he doesn't go around lecturing you and he's usually happy with his disgustingness. Yeah. And yeah, I bet with that clothing, you get a lot of boys looking at you. Then, you know, that type of comment. It's not funny. Like, um, again, I like love Doug Stanhope. I love it, root comedy. It's always sunny. It's certainly not a... But, but this is... Yeah. I yeah. guess, I don't know, maybe it's a cultural shift from a different generation. I don't know. But it's just so yeah, like fuck. No you. man, it happens. It like, matters really, who the yeah. It matters who no, the it, comment it, comes from and how it comes from. All of this in in life, there's context, and for that context makes you receive stuff. And at least in your head, you think that that person is coming from a different place or has different intentions, which makes it different. But with, with Jenk, it just comes from gross part. It seems like. And uh, by the way, doesn't like. Like, to be fair, you've had a lot of experience. Therefore, that makes your statement even more true. And like, yeah, so you're base, basically he's calling her a slut, right? Well, that's, yeah, I mean, and, even you know, though that's her profession. Well, she was a porn star. But then again, I don't um, know. That like, doesn't really give an excuse, I think, to randomly talk, you know, with someone just because no, no. they're in a profession and, and to just, talk with them. And badly and anyway she was that used to be her yeah, profession yeah. now she's no, not no, i believe she's a model i know you're not making that point i'm just saying no 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 i'm just saying even if like if she's a pornographic actress she's not a like a slut is yeah. somebody who does that True. like for you know because they like sex or but not you know not that i, I think anything is wrong with anyone's whatever yeah. behavior is consensual is okay but yeah, exa- it's not even like, I don't know, man, it's, it's, I hate, it just, it, it's funny. Yeah. Because I, f- like, I, I say that because I didn't want, like, I feel somewhat hypocritical to, because I'm, I l- l- defend most people's right to joke all the time. And he's allowed to joke, anything. but you're not telling him, and, don't make a joke or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. And Rick, I think Ricky Gervais, I think, makes this point that, that you can tell if a joke comes mm-hmm. from a good place or a bad place. I just like, made that point. You, fine, oh, credit Ricky you? Gervais. <laughs> Yours truly no, just you, made that <laughs> joke. <laughs> yeah, I, you did, but you talked about context. Mostly. Okay, fine, true. God damn it. See, that's what uh, they say. Yeah. Don't throw extra words in there. <laughs> <laughs> no this is like you know whenever your mom and dad tells you that like what's good for you you don't accept it but jordan peterson or i don't know somebody online noam chomsky tells you ah, yes this is yeah. okay I'm, uh, yeah you're right you're right i need to start listening to the people in my life instead of just obsessed with celebrity comedians <laughs> exactly uh, okay should we move on to the other tweets to twitter's reaction to it and should i read those uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, so there are three here. So the first one is just, I'll read it, but the last one's the key one. Uh, Nocturnal Gino wrote, I've come to expect nothing less of Jenk ever since last year when he was shaming those with background of substantive use recovery just to take a shot at Mike Liddell. He likes progress- He likes the progressive title when it suits him. Chris Wants a Revolution wrote, you're a douchebag, Jenk. But Patrick... Um, brought up this one there's a theme here and this was again jank responding um to jenna jameson jenna jameson written just watch ben shapiro destroy jank uger at politicon on youtube seriously ben please run for president to which he wrote i remember watching you getting destroyed too i mean <laughs> which again, again is it? just it's just disgusting coming from him and the way he lectures at all this i mean i get it that she's coming at him but i mean you know it's just still pretty off-putting and disgusting uh, it's so off-putting comment. that's why like th- that's the thing like sometimes there are jokes that i would personally never make but i read them and i laugh so hard and i'm like oh man that was actually so funny but so rude or blah 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 but this is just off-putting and again it's again it reminds me of that like friend of your uncle's that every part you meet mm-hmm. you meet is the same joke about how like a slutty women are or same joke about how 
like uh, foreign workers are all shit or you know what I mean? Like it's the same. Jo- okay, we get it. We know you're trying to or you're trying to start a fight or something, like like a debate or something. Yeah. So yeah, that was fascinating. I think he's right. There is a thing. Not that you know you should care too much, but it was just yeah. He he's funny. He's just the funny person. Yeah, and then I, he, he can remain all that. It's just the level of fakeness when he comes in. Like a week, he's gonna be in front of the camera again with Anna, like you know, acting like you know, there's these two angels. Transsexual like, communities yeah. under attack. <laughs> Let's get into the transsexual stuff right away. Actually, oh, oh. as you mentioned right, it. <laughs> actually, first before oh, yeah. that, we wanted to touch on TYT. Nina, kinda. it's future. Yeah, <laughs> what is Nina TYT's Turner. future? Nina Turner is under attack. Can you believe it that her opponents are doing ads against her? Can you believe that she's been attacked by ads? Ah, oh. now let me just tweet something. You bitch! I hate you. You are all a sluts. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> seriously, man. Seriously. So yeah, with TYT. What are they gonna do with their views going down and everything? I mean, one other thing is just to keep on picking fights with Joe Rogan. <laughs> which they've been doing so there's that clip that's been circulating again i don't know what the clip you know where it comes from or what it's about but it's pretty much like mentioned you know <laughs> the level Jen- of projection yeah i think in that clip yeah perhaps okay. jenk asking trans woman who came out and who had sex sorry with joe rogan <laughs> to, to come, come out, out and let them know and man i think the vanguard here maybe we'll have one or two disagreements with the vanguard uh now in their coverage but i think one thing that uh, zach said which is like jenk is so clearly again for someone who pretends he cares about the trans community he's just weaponizing them fully in this like battle that he's going you know with joe rogan so you know with joe rogan the best way that he's found i think yeah, I think his favorite way is kind of in the trans issue, right? That's like the one that seems the most clear cut to to attack Joe Rogan on. So that's the one that he sticks on. And yeah, I mean, for someone, again, who claims to be doing good stuff from the outside, it just seems like he uses trans ar- trans arguments, you know, trans and um, what do you say? Trans causes and all this just to attack Joe Rogan, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be, that's his, been his whole thing, right? That he... Like when, I mean, he, I know, he's not Dave Rubin level sort of a mm. grifter that, you know, just switch sides with him like that. Yeah. But he's been capitalizing on different things. He used to be more TMZ stuff. Now it's more political stuff and all that. But uh, yeah, I think he's mostly trying to get more views and things. And yeah, trans community, black community, women's right all of that is a means to an end and again i don't mind that if you're open about it mm-hmm. uh, but to pretend to be this like you know try not try trying is of course yeah. that's what you know you should do but the pretense to be far more noble and far more uh, selfless and it like like taking actions clearly for personal sort of uh, uh, ego, not ego but personal growth or whatever growth of a channel I mean mm-hmm. but it's a personal channel really but at this point and uh, instead pretending it's like doing it for a cause uh, again it reeks of hypocrisy yeah. and uh, just yeah it's better and finally this final kind of related oh wait clip. wait oh no i want to go to this to the other clip but yeah go ahead no no yeah we have to before moving on uh i i like the vanguard takes on the jank yuger thingy but uh, the, the guy with the beard is zach right zach yeah my, oh yeah like, true i haven't heard that part so i forgot <laughs> man. i forgot about that tell me again about it's hilarious <laughs> there is a hilarious part because uh, the, uh, I forgot about uh, that, the other, <laughs> because you know they had the, basically they had the same take as we did yeah. kind of like they were a bit maybe harsher or I don't know kinder I don't remember but uh, uh, it was quite funny because it, it, it is Cenk challenging if I'm not mistaken uh, he's saying that Cenk is ta- sorry Joe is talking about trans people so much that he's certainly obsessed with them and he's probably having sex with 
trans people and those trans people should come out and tell us so we you know we discuss yeah. that and we yeah. out this man and you know that i don't then uh you know we say oh this is clearly you know using this cause and all that and zach is zach is really interesting because mm-hmm. he's it starts like this that he almost i think he's this is the first time he sees this and he's like, yeah. <laughs> you know what you know what Jink is such an asshole. Do he, is, he, is he not thinking about that transsexual woman? Does he know how hard it is for a trans woman to come out or a trans man to come out? And does he not think about that trans person? Does he see maybe that trans person is having a loving relationship with Joe, but they can't just come into public because of their personal and and I was like, what is going on? <laughs> Zach, calm down. It's just the, the, Zach was defending that imaginary and hypothetical trans friend of Joe Rogan, like he was like his sister or something. <laughs> well, how dare you go after this trans this tra-? And then the other person is like, uh, yeah, yeah. Let, going back to the main issue, but yeah, this type of you shouldn't use, you know, causes like this to it does feel like a very Thing. and they move on and they discuss that for a bit and then at the end when they're just about to finish off the segment Zach again comes and again that trans woman <laughs> you're trying to out to trans woman that Joe Rogan's girlfriend like it's almost like now nah. at this point Joe Rogan and that imaginary trans woman are married I think in, head, in Zach's head like how, how dare you going after someone's personal life does anybody discuss your personal life you fat fucking pig <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, again, I completely agree with the Vanguard guys in the sentiment, but I thought that the defense of a hypothetical <laughs> and imaginary trans friend of a Jorogan who is he's having sexual relations, it just seemed like, uh, like, uh, I, I calm down, man. It's just nobody's out there, like, with this, just chill out. <laughs> like, Jesus so Christ. <laughs> it was so good. Check it out. Check it out. This is what happens. You make baseless accusations. <laughs> exact. And people I'm taking are your like... word. Because he's a confused... <laughs> Go to the defense of this imaginary hypothetical. <laughs> yeah. no, Zach the knows there were the three of them. <laughs> yeah, the focus on individual was just so good. It was just so good. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's hilarious. But, and then... So you to know, ra- I remember... You know, I remember when I used to have, when I was uh, 14 and stuff, I used to have a girlfriend from Canada. And whenever (laughs) somebody would say, no, you don't have a girlfriend from Canada. No, it's a lie. You're just saying that shit because, you know, we can't. I would always always get similar type of angry, you know, like, (laughs) no, no, her life. Man, it, it's <laughs> oh, you got cut up. Are you there? Can okay, yeah, you okay. Your, yeah. No, your video. Okay, yeah, no, nothing. I was just gonna say, perhaps this happens in other countries too. I'm sure it does. But in Iran, I would see that all the time. Like, someone would like show me like, a picture, and be like, Yeah, this is my girlfriend. She lives in either she lived in the US or Canada. <laughs> it was one of these two. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh... I, from what I understand, the joke I was making, uh, yeah, isn't that a thing in US? Because like a lot of people on the East Coast, oh, like, there's a train. So they, that's a thing in the US too, I think. Ah, maybe. Okay, but so yeah, there you go. Iran, it's everywhere. Uh, that's why I said Canada, actually. I, I mean, I, 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 in Iran, it's actually, everybody says US. Canada, US, sometimes France, I've also heard, but, you know, like in Europe or something. Germany. But US is the... <laughs> Yeah, German, not <laughs> nobody believes that. But yeah, but US is the main one that they have a girlfriend who whose family like literally just moved in the US. Yeah, exactly. The family is Iranian, right? Like it's yes, not a it's course. not an American. It's like an Iranian who just moved there. <laughs> exactly. You, know, you have to be, you know, economical with your <laughs> lies. You can't go. Through. Yeah, she's from Texas. <laughs> She's from a southern, mm-hmm. you know, land-owning family, really, truly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Oh man. So okay, so to wrap up, so, so to wrap up this video, there's again another clip circulating, which is again the shortest clip, which could mean anything, really. So, uh, you know, perhaps we shouldn't even be commenting on too much, but we're not comment on the clip itself too, too much. But pretty much, Joe Rogan says something along the lines that, oh. 
a lot of people are so sensitive and they're like crying over Roe v. Wade and they're not even showing up to work. And he's like, oh, and shut the fuck up and go to work and like work even harder. I mean, I don't know. It's a bit of a ridiculous comment overall. I mean, I don't know how many people there are in, in society strongly who are affected, who like are affected by non like personal things in a way. And they're like, oh, I can't even go to work. It's bothering me so much. I'm sure there are. But I mean, I found it to be a bit of a weird um, observation and comment, although who knows what he was trying to connect that to before and after. So to be completely fair and it's. And it's quite a mission to go back and <laughs> listen where that clip came from, from anything. I don't know if that is too feasible. But yeah, what do you make of it? And then we can touch on Joe's politics, because like the vanguard really went in that direction talking about Joe's politics. So I just want to add my two cents there, too. Yeah, fair enough. No, I, uh, to be honest, I completely disagree with you. It's not that, uh, I mean, we had a little chat before the show. It's not that I think it's a large uh, segment of, of people that is going out whenever they see something on TV happen and uh, oh I don't I can't go to work I can't do my activities I don't think it's a large segment of people but I do think it's a significant number of middle class people who are like that and I've seen it quite a bit and it's kind of like you know whenever we make fun of somebody who's very similar to Trump or some one of these, you know, uh, right, extreme right wingers or extreme woke people and stuff. I gen- I think that's, I don't think they ever are actually majority. I think sadly, crazy people are the loudest. I think that's a mm. Iranian thing. I don't know. But uh, that they always, so therefore you, for example, whenever people talk about Americans, nobody talks about like, I think average American, like, Amer- you know, whenever negatively. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, yeah. Like, oh, they're all fat they're all stupid or blah blah even american comedians or whenever iranians talk about the iran or oh, iranians are all uh backwards they're all mm-hmm. reactionaries you know i don't think ever that's true about majority of people but yeah whenever and then vanguard people take that to say that he's a fascist and all that yeah. i think he's pointing out his real significant number of people that genuinely uh, are just they are uh, react. Uh, most people, man, seem to be reactive just to TV. And let me just little lay my case here. That look at with the Ukraine thing. It's certainly a tragedy. People dying all the time. Children, women losing their homes, all that. But that was on TV, so a lot of people reacted. But uh, you know, uh, uh, Yemeni war, same sort of number of people. Well, far more number of people dying wasn't on TV, people not reacting. Female, uh, like Roe versus Wade, very negative thing that it's getting repealed in my view, very negative thing that it's not been codified yet. People care about, but you know, what's going on? Like just the reactions to Roe versus Wade. I mean, I, I again, I'm sure the, ex, the most extreme case are the ones that say that, oh, I don't want to go to work. But I saw certain, like reactions on a lower scale among my friends. Like, I don't recall when, you know, women and children are getting bombed the shit out of in the Middle East. Anybody cared that much? Again, unless it's Afghanistan when America is pulling mm. out. That was, again, suddenly everybody remembered the Afghanistan woman. You know, like, you know, so I think there is something to be said about people in general. These two examples were just more recent so they came to my mind uh, people in general and the fact that they are just responding to what they see on tv and they're oversensitive about it uh in a like in a weird fashion i, I yeah just, just... i agree with all everything you said i just don't know if too many are oversensitive because a lot of them actually forget about it very quickly too like whether it's the afghanistan one you know they move on a day or two That's just a like point. a tv a- whether it's roe versus i mean roe versus wade perhaps you know they're more but like the ukraine thing right the ukraine thing i live in europe i remember six weeks ago is different um than now or whatever day it is they're always counting it <laughs> anytime to a tv that like a day 87 and three hours into the <laughs> the russian thing it, it has changed and people care so much um less now you hear less about it you know it dominates media a bit less so yeah i don't know how many how many people take it that sensitive and stuff but i really like the nuanced part of the beginning of your argument too that what was talking about 
fraction of people and oftentimes the craziest you're right are the are the loudest the minority can often be and the loudest i i, I certainly think I'm more effective in achieving power, mm -hmm. but uh, I like to, I think maybe we can come to a point of compromise because there is a word in Persian I've never found a quite English translation for, which is, you probably know Javgir. You've mm. heard that? They say somebody's yes. Javgir. Yeah. Um, Jav, Jav is atmosphere. Jav yeah. is literally atmosphere. Gear is somebody who gets, who easily gets his stuff. Peer like pressure. A, no, is it not kind of like peer pressure? It's similar, it is, it but is, yeah. But but it's more like an adjective about a person that you are very easily peer pressured. Yeah. So you know, or influenced by the atmosphere exactly. that surrounds you. And the 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 key thing to it that I can't like translate in English is the is the momentary nature of it. Yeah, like, yeah, again, no, no, for I, sure. I'll explain it, it right now. Yeah. I know exactly. I know what a good example. It's like someone's at a concert, and like perhaps they're not like you know they're just like. Uh, dancing with everybody and they're not like you don't think that they're the craziest person that will do the craziest thing but then suddenly like everybody's really dancing crazy or like does like one or two crazy thing and this person gets like so excited that they do like the craziest thing out of everyone like take off their shirt and pants i'm just and giving, it starts just, doing wheel roll right that's like the yeah. thing right like the atmosphere just got to them um, so much that they suddenly behave in this way that is unusual um for them really i think like even it doesn't have to be unusual but it's really the atmosphere that yeah with that expression that really made them kind of outdo everyone and get so get so crazy or like suddenly like people are making jokes and then you make like a really bad joke like on top of everyone yeah yeah, like, yeah. it's uh, like you escalated suddenly too yeah, much yeah exactly so I, I i it feels like majority of people and their relationship with media and again, I don't think that's something new. I don't think that's unique to our time. I don't think uh, anybody can change it, or like largely probably. But uh, like it is very like that. It's like a jab gear situation, as in they, yeah, they sort of for two minutes they're like all about Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah Afghanistan while, is just the perfect maybe, one. It's just a perfect while, example. Yeah, while maybe it would be better to pay attention in a far lower intensity wise but yeah. in a longer time frame right like always thinking about these things but not with such intensity that you go on twitter or go on comment section and accuse everybody who's it slightly disagrees with you to be a you know a, a complete uh, uh, traitor to the mm -hmm. cause or whatever that cause may be and instead keep that in mind like constantly it's like i think that's I think that's the main criticism. It's not about Roe versus Wade or about people being lazy or something, which is what seems to be. So maybe we can reach a co like compromise in the sense mm -hmm. that if you're, it's not about, yeah, we are targeting just those people in a general sense. Fine. <clears throat> Fair enough there. Fair enough. And just to wrap up, I think regarding again, his policy. Again, Hegelian, uh, Hegelian, <laughs> not dialectic, well, kind of Hegelian dialectic. We went from an abstract to uh, you know uh, concrete the, so. the, and just yeah. yeah and just to on his politics you know they call him a fascist and they're like before he was a leftist he wasn't the leftist before either i know some of the things wasn't i know he liked anything. bernie sanders he, like a everyone is kind of all over the place but joe is particularly like <laughs> like everyone and he's all over the place and i'm sure now he probably still supports healthcare. and then and sometimes he just they're not even right wing um like some of the things that he says and we don't like, they're not necessarily right wing politics. You know, they don't have um, necessarily anything with that. Just like right now, the comment on Roe versus Wade and people being sensitive. You can be a leftist and make that kind of comment. I feel it's not necessarily even related to his politics. But yeah, his politics are um, have always been like this or uh, kind of all over the place. And like it changes with this, it changes with that. He likes one thing, doesn't like another thing. And in fact, I mean, I I don't know. I find like his politics thing to be like the least interesting stuff that he he perhaps even has to offer. I mean, I don't even see why I agree people with shouldn't be too I... tempted, like Mo seek too much see influence or knowledge when it comes to either his domestic politic views and especially not international. But international, he doesn't even pretend. I've never even um, he's like had like two or three comments before but yeah that's all i have to say about his politics really and i've stolen this from sam who really made me realize a, a year or so ago that yeah 
Oh. It's neither left or right. He's just like normal people all over the place oftentimes. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. He's, I think he's just like normal people whenever he's presented with an idea, he takes his like side. He might have, he's, I would say he's generally a bit more sympathetic to liberal leftist causes. I would say generally like he's pro, he seems to be for uh, supportive of so- social welfare programs. Of course, he's also has that same sort of suspicion of normal people, which I share to a huge extent that the money we are giving to government, where is it going exactly? Mm-hmm. Is it going to social, you know, you know. So, uh, yeah, I think he's all over the place like most people. I mean, like most people I know, he has a couple of issues. I think you said that to me one time. He has a couple of issues he's obsessed with. Like, obsessed. You know, uh, yeah, you know, they I can be non-political also. A lot of them are actually non-political. Like, he can't like you know fitness. these yeah and weird part of fitness right like sleeping in a chamber like he's obsessed with that or surgeries <laughs> he's obsessed or with recovery. surgery he's yeah obsessed recovery, with recovery. Yeah. and yeah and like where and to again, get this kind of thing I, yeah like, i don't every, understand yeah. why people why people find i want in conversation i can to batman <laughs> like right now so you know <laughs> yeah. so you see batman got mentioned so people are all, we are all like that no and you know we are and usually when you're obsessed with an issue your takes on that issue are on the extremes mm-hmm. because you read all this stuff you want to take your side so you know uh, i just don't find anything surprising there to be honest uh, i think especially you know i, I was always interested in his fitness system stuff the most and he's the stuff about history like whenever he brings these cookie historians that uh, talk about ancient civilizations and all that who by the way they're they don't they're not as cookie as i made them sound. like they do have they do have a couple of good historical points i think they're they may they over exaggerate they point points to a huge extent but it was so fascinating and then you go read some books that are so you know that was always my thing I don't know, like, yeah, yeah. like, yeah, poli- his politics is just seems to be very normal. That's yeah, why not I that was interesting. Not I mean, the most interesting talk I've heard him have in a long time was like the Quentin Tarantino one. For me, it's reached this great. kind of stuff. That was like, awesome. yeah. sometimes it's random people, and his best skill is really this kind of conversation, especially some conversations he really doesn't have like whatsoever of an agenda, and you should have an agenda or like an idea of where he wants to take it and points that he wants to make. And sometimes those are even the best, which are kind of like with people like Quentin Tarantino or with with Matt Taibbi ones are Mm. quite fun. I must say. Yeah, that's true. For sure. But okay, let's wrap this up. Um, So folks, please let us know what you think. Leave your comments, question, criticism down below. Make sure you get them. If not, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you in our next video. Thank you. And if anybody says anything negative about my girlfriend in US, (laughs) which is certainly real. In Canada or US? (laughs) Like uh, she's uh, she's got dual citizenship. Oh, yeah, okay, she her mother is Canadian, her father is American. <laughs> they met uh, on a uh, they met on a train. All right. <laughs>